All right, what is going on, guys? And welcome to the video. So, I guess F12 is my start recording button, and I guess that opens up coding on a web browser. But anyway, today I am not bringing you a video of 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 mine. I'm going to be doing a review of Steel Guts video that he released a couple days ago in the LT432 on Prokhorovka. And what I want to talk about is um, just how aggressive Steel gets in his scouting. I have learned so much from, from watching this guy play. Um, and to me, it's just incredible to see that even though I've learned so much from him and we're both good light tankers, we still play very differently at times. And I want to show you kind of everything he does right in this video, because there's very little that he does wrong in this game. And we all make mistakes, but he made, you know, hardly any in this entire game. And he's very good with active scouting, right? Like, I don't do as much active scouting. I probably would have already been in that bush up there or went to, like, G1 or something like that, because that's... That's what I do. I like to passive scout. And you know me, I have like 1,200 battles in the even 90. I'm a passive scouter. It's what I know how to do. I know all the bushes. I know the areas to get to. I know how to, how to you know, set up the tank for it. I know when to stop passive scouting, when to move, you know, move up to the next bush or what have you. And then I know when to make those active scout runs. Steel likes to do a lot of active scouting. And the LT-432 is made for it. It's pretty fast. And the turret is really, it's like low profile, you know. Um, you really don't want to get hit in it because it gets lit on fire pretty easily, but he has the auto extinguisher on, so. But Steel does what I would never do, and he makes a pass going out like this into the field and back around. I don't like doing this. I think it's way too risky, but a lot of times it pays off. In this situation, it didn't. Um, I don't think he spotted much. If, if, if anything, um, but it's still very early in the game. And in, in doing this, and doing this pass right here, he's going to sp spot the Progetto 66 and the Ferdinand. Actually, I think the Ferdinand got lit by one of these guys. But when you spot someone up here, the thing is, you might look at one spot as like, oh, I only spotted one person, but it's a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. When you spot one person and you have a tortoise, an AMX, another tortoise, and a Yag Tiger back here, and even someone else, I can't see what the SU-130, you have all these tanks and you have heavies here that are all going to shoot at this guy. When you get spotted on proc and you're sitting still over here in the woods, you are SOL. I'm telling you, even if you're heavily armored, you're going to get whacked because... Everyone can see you and everyone has shots on you. This map it has no, hardly any... Um, like terrain differences, right? Um, it's 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 completely flat over here, and you, you know you're going to get annihilated unless, of course, you're on this one little hill back here, which is like the only you know um, difference in 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 level. There's like a hill on right on the very edge here, and you can kind of use it to stay safe, which is basically what both of these guys are kind of doing. Um, the Ferdinand, it, more the Progetto 66, but anyway. My point being, when you spot someone on Prokhorovka and arguably Malinovka too, likely they're going to get annihilated because these are wide open maps, right? So now what he's going to do is go to this bush. I've actually learned this area from him and really him alone. I've never seen someone else use a, the bush like that. And you have to be very cautious of it. This is something that I, I noted in his video when I watched it is I, and I, it might have been the same tank, right? I actually did this. I backed up into this bush and someone right here, I think it was like an AMX M4 or something like that, spotted me and I got annihilated. Like I had no chance. I was dead before Sixth Sense even went off. So that's that's a problem with this map is when you get lit, you have to stay moving 100%. Or you're going to, like I said, you're just going to get absolutely destroyed. So you saw that he was paying attention to the, where the bat chat was, and he went, I know I'm going to be spotted, and he backed down. That's his awareness. And you get very good at that when you play a light tank, like light tanks this much. You already know, I know this guy's within my spotting range. He's going to spot me. I need to move. And look, he is still full HP. Yes, he has 70 spotting damage, but it's all, of, it's all about patience. And that's why he titled this video, you know, bad game early, great game late. And that is what light tanks do. You'll hear him say this a million times. Stay stay alive 
because at the end of the game, that's where light tanks shine. They have tremendous speed. They have tremendous spotting ability. And, that, you know, they also have decent fire. Like the LT-432 actually has decent firepower and pen. So you can use that to your advantage as well. But we're going to get, he's going to get into the bush now. And now he's also keeping an eye on the bat chat, right? So he sees the bat chat. And he's able to position himself in the bushes to keep the bat chat between him and a full, you know, set of bushes there so he doesn't get lit. And now the bat chat is dead. And guess what? When you kill the enemy light tank, it opens up, you know, a whole new set of doors for you. Because now he, he's not going to get lit here. And this is another thing he does. This is kind of passive scouting, right? I would never do this because I fear that someone might be sitting in here or someone might be sitting back here, like right in here, that would light me. But he's making it work. I don't know how he makes this work unless he's just sure that no one is back here, like where the Batchat 12T was. And now he could be sure of it, right? Because the Batchat 12T is here. But at first, and again, like see, like Progetto is right here. And now he's going to YOLO him. And this is what I don't like. I would rather stay on the move. I would do something like this, like run right all the way down the bush line and stay in this little, you know, I don't know what you would call this. It's kind of a dip, but that's how I would do it. I would run down like this along the bush line until I got spotted and then come down. And, and so you're in here. The problem with doing that is that you might get like, like the T32 might have shots in you. But if you win this side of the map, what you can also do is come down the middle dip instead, and then come up onto this ridge, which is the one right here. And you can run this ridge line and stay safe from everyone over here because this ridge line gives you cover right here. It gives you cover from like the T32 and all these people. That's what I like to do. That's why if you ever see me playing live and there's like a tank here, I say, you know, eliminate this T57 heavy or whoever's here so that I can get get through here without being spotted and then light this whole forest area. But Steel does it a little bit differently. He, he kind of runs down the bush line. And I guess in a way, maybe some of these bushes help keep you concealed. But I wouldn't do that. That's something that's very different between the two of us, but it worked really, really well for him here. Look at, he's at 8,857 spotting and he didn't get spotted for most of that time. It was the Progetto that finally YOLO'd him and spotted him, I guess. And now he's going to get a shot on the Lorraine, doing some damage himself. And now we have this guy, um, T32 or whatever this is, and he's going to press him. And that's the game, guys. He does 791 damage, but this is 9,562 experience or uh, spotting damage, rather. Uh, does he show end plates? Yeah, he must. So this is a mastery for him. Um, 10k spotting was that even 10,338? 10,338 damage with your assistance. That is insane. I don't remember what mine was. It was a little over 10k, my highest. But this is how it is. It is done guys this is how it is done if you are looking to learn how to better yourself with light tanks you can watch me but i would watch him because a lot of what i do i learned from him but i like to emphasize again in closing that we're still very different like the, a lot of the things he did i wouldn't do and i feel like he gets almost too aggressive at times but sometimes different things work for different people and different things work in different situations. Like if, if I did what I did, I could have got whacked by that T32, for instance. But let's just say that, you know, there was a TD that was sitting near that T32 um, that, you know, when he was coming, I'll do it this way. When he was coming through the bush line like this, you know, and the enemies are here, well, maybe there was a TD over here and had I done what I normally do, maybe I would have been kind of safe from that TD um, but he would have got hit. So sometimes different things work in, 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 in situations that you think are the same, but in reality, people are sitting in different areas and, you know, and that's just where the experience comes from. You have to know what works and what doesn't. And Steel knows what works. He does what works. He plays so many light tanks. He has so much experience with it that, I mean, this is just another day, right? This is just another game for him. 10K spotting, easy peasy, right guys? So hope you enjoyed this one. I know it's not a video of my own, but um, you know, this guy is my clan leader and, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that he is because like I said, it's, it's just so cool to have my clan leader be the person that I almost look up to like skill, right? Like it's, it's just, it's just cool to, to, to have that. And in a way we represent skill. 
So, but these two guys, um, you know, I love all their videos and, you know, they're, they're great people. And look, if you guys want to join the clan, we have room, grab room too. So get in. Anyway, that's it guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'll catch you for the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.